Yes, sir. Else? need about three or four minutes. I, I've, I've got to say this because I've been sitting there um, after our conversations. Let me just preface it by saying um, in any of our objections, whatever, you make a ruling. Sometimes we win. Sometimes we lose. We move on. That's fine. Um, if, if after your ruling, I've got a case that I want to bring to your attention, I say, Judge, reconsider your ruling based on this case. And, and you consider it, that's fine. If you don't want to consider it, that's fine too. But what I found objectionable, and I want the court to address with the state, um, is, is what happened at the bench earlier. There was an objection to the video. You made a ruling. We moved on. The state came back up and made representations to you. And they weren't representations based upon some new case law that they had found. There were representations, misrepresentations that were made directly to you, all of us standing there right there at the bench. She said something very, very fact specific in an attempt to get you to readdress the issue again. Madam Prosecutor said, I want you to, to, to listen to, to the, this, the 17 minute, 17 second video because what you had based your ruling on was that the parties in the background couldn't be identified. All right. And Madam Prosecutor said to you and, and was not accurate. And, and I'm going to be charitable and say that she, that she was that she was disingenuous. What she said was these people in the background, the only thing that you hear are people saying, yeah, yeah, that's it. When Mr. When Mr. Steele corrected her and said that's not true, she said, Mr. Steele is not accurate. What Mr. Steele just told you is not true. The only thing you can hear in the background is yeah, yeah. And actually, when she, when she stepped up there, it was in an attempt to, to act as though she didn't know what your ruling previously was. Because their attempt was to go ahead and play the video at that time, despite your previous ruling. My point is this. After you, you, you decided you, to reconsider, you want to hear the video yourself, you had a chance to hear it. You had a chance to hear what we had already heard, what we knew it said, what they knew it said. And there are at least five or six different things on that video, on that video audio, that were in contradiction of what Madam Prosecutor said. On God, snitching bitches. I'm going to tell a lie on God. That's what I'm talking about. No back and forth with you, bro. Fuck nigga. I'm, I'm not just saying that for, for emphasis. I'm saying that because what she said to you was inaccurate. At some point, at some point, Your Honor, I'm asking you to... We've had this conversation about candor with the court over the course of the past right, number of weeks. 3.3. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've had that conversation about it. And when we step up to you and we make a representation, it ought to be candid and it ought to be truthful. And what she said, in an, in, in, look, if, if she wins the motion, ultimately she wins. But you don't do it by standing there three feet from you in your face and lying to the court. And that's what she did. And she knew what she was doing. And it's not right. Mr. You heard Mr. Steele. Mr. Steele said, Your Honor, I am willing to surrender my bar card and have her surrender her bar card if what she is saying is true. He wasn't wrong. She wasn't wrong. She was not candid with the court. And, and at some point, you've got to say to the parties, if, if, if I'd done that, I would expect you to say, Mr. Adams, don't do that again. Don't step up to me and lie to try and get me to rule or overrule something I've already ruled on. Don't do it again. You ought to say that to them. We're not playing games in this courtroom. These are these people's lives at stake. And like I said, sometimes you win a motion, sometimes you lose. But, but you don't get the court to, to address something or readdress something like that. That's all. Say something to them is, is all I'm requesting. All right, sir. Yes, sir. You may. Your Honor, I would not have asked the court to listen to the 17-second video. Um, but but what you did tell me, uh, Ms. Love, wasn't the wasn't the entirety of the what was purportedly on states one 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 twelve Bravo Bravo. It did have other statements on it. It's different if you'd have told me. 
Judge there are statements on there. Probably need to listen for yourself. Not that, not just yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Honor, my my recollection, and I'm going to speak candidly because it's been. I would hope I would hope there would be nothing less than candor. And Your Honor, that's what I've been pushing for all along. There have been times, as the court is aware, that we have been at the bench. And, and misrepresentations, bald misrepresentations have been made and the court has seen my reaction to them. I am the one that's constantly saying I have a duty of candor to the court. All of when you Mr. do. All of you do. We do. And when Mr. Adams just read those series of things that he read, those half of what he said, I didn't catch. The part that I did catch and remember is the part I kept repeating just now snitching bitch snitching bitches and I didn't even recall that that part was there but what I did know was that the relevant portion and the relevant speaker was Mr. Williams and your honor I'd ask you know we can do this in chambers or wherever but your honor I believe that um, certain requests and comments to the court have risen to a, a level of being not true motions or requests based on legal analyses, but more leveled specifically on a personal level, which I've attempted to stay away from. Whatever one's reason for doing what they do, if it's to better advocate for their client, that is fine, they're entitled. Well, it's, but, you're, not, you're not entitled to do everything uh, as, in, in whatever position you're from. Uh, be it the state or be the, the, the defendants, because you have a overall right of candor, responsibility of candor to the court. I um, agree, Your Honor. There are and certain things you just cannot do anyways. Zealous advocacy is one thing, but it should never be confused for um, misstatements or for anything else that's not less than candid to the court. I think both sides, you all have are fighting very diligently and violently about about your perspective sides, and you know as I as I said a couple of days ago, what the public sees is you know there's friction between the state, the defense, and the court. That is natural, and it is good for the system because it shows that that we are not in collusion with one another. It, justice is what it will be, and whatever this jury will de will decide. But what I am going to just advise everyone to kind of relook is what you tell each other, what you tell me, because there have been times where I have not received, I would consider what, what is accurate information. Let me just put it that way. Okay. And I know, and I'm not trying to attribute, you know, dishonesty to any party, but I, but you know, I have to rely, most all courts have to rely upon counsel for their representation. So if you can't remember what it is, just say, tell me that. Um, it's just like your duty to, when upon asked if I, if you have, if there's any adverse position to this particular statute of law, you're required to tell me. I mean, so, so I, so I mean, I understand there's zealous advocacy, but I would also just remind everybody within the sound of my voice, professionalism really does matter to you all as, and, and it matters to, to, to the court and it matters to those of the, those that are watching this particular tri uh, this particular trial yes there have been some times that this um, this these proceedings are are acrimonious um, are um, intense uh, and the court has had to chastise both both sides for 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 things that have occurred I don't have any personal issue. Remember what I told you, I tell the jury this when I, when I charge them. The court has no interest in this case. My sole responsibility is to see that it is tried fairly as to both sides. So, and I, and I maintain that in terms of, in terms of, I respect everybody in here as advocates, but you know, I do need to have you just relook what you're saying to each other and to uh, and to the court um, because it really does make a difference uh, in terms of uh, of our presentation to one a uh, presentation um, before this jury and then ultimately the jury is going to make a decision so I look all of you are very 
seasoned advocates, even the newest newest lawyers in here have crossed that particular bridge of, of um, um, at this point in time, given the length of time that we've been in this courtroom. So I, I can just tell you from everybody's perspective, Ms. Love and, and, and everyone else, Mr. Adams and all of you in here, um, that you're, that you all have jobs you have to do. The court understands that. Um, but please remember at the end of the day, you know, this won't be the last case you try with one another. It won't be the last issue that you try. So, um, but the court understands that you have a job to do. Um, but understand that I have a job to do as well. I'm the referee. I have to determine what comes in and comes out, uh, in terms of, terms of, uh, terms of my functions. So, Understand at the end of the day, you know, we have that similar goal, but I understand you all have sim you have dissimilar objectives in terms of what your what your the essences are in terms of your roles and responsibilities. But don't ever forget your duty of candidate of the court, your duty of professionalism as, as advocates, and um, and the duty of civility okay. still applies in both in criminal cases as well. Um, these defendants are presumed to be innocent and they are innocent and that's what this jury will ultimately decide but we, we, and we will have to get there and we'll make it and they'll make a decision okay and your honor I'm certain the court means until until proven otherwise they are presumed innocent until they're innocent proven right otherwise. now as we sit right. here so and, and, and until I charge the jury accordingly and otherwise and, uh, and, and the evidence is presented to them I'll evidence first and then charge them, but um, as to how this case goes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and thank you for addressing also the concern that I have, because that is my main concern, the level of civility and the level of personal commentary uh, level that is, in my estimation, not necessary. And I appreciate the but that's every, every Everyone, that. you know, everyone's can be accused of that at, at various times in this particular trial. I mean, I think that everyone, that every issue that you have seen, Ms. Logan, anything that's been raised at this point in time, anyone who's sitting in this courtroom has probably violated at some point in time or, 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 or another. However, let's just try and, let's just try and do better in terms of, ter terms of that. But just like I told you with the uh, evidence and the other things that need to be brought forth, um, you know, let's try and do better with that because certainly, um, as I mentioned earlier, you're, you know, I don't want to have the jury sitting here for, for as long as they, for long periods of time um, when we take up other business. So we need to plan, plan, plan accordingly. But I think you all could probably, you know, um, do a better job at least forecasting what is going to be tendered or submitted so that we can minimize delay. So, I mean, to the extent you all have started to do that, it's, it's work, it seems to be working a little bit better, but we'll see how it goes.